Hello everyone, my name is Crimson and welcome back to another Let's Chat. Um, I really am just wanting to talk about some other things I've been seeing and my own personal thoughts on them again. Uh, this time it's going to be Disney. Now, I grew up with Disney being something that I kind of loved but also hated for different reasons. Um, Growing up, Disney was the family-friendly, it's-in-everyone's-house kind of publisher. So, a classic saying that I grew up with was, in every household you should have Disney movies and a Bible. Now, of course, to the entire world's shock and surprise, Disney is not like that anymore. Unfortunately, Disney has become a uh, pretty toxic place to actually go hang out around. And I can't believe it happened. Like, growing up, I remember the biggest controversy that Disney had was that the Pirates movies were rated PG-13 instead of PG for kids. That was a huge controversy. But... Ever since, like, I, I don't know exactly when, but I do believe it's when Bob Iger came back, Disney went downhill. It started with, I, I feel like, in my personal experience, it started with Captain Marvel, which is an entire other rant and ramble. I have a lot of thoughts about Marvel as a franchise, and most of them have become negative. And... That aside, like, we'll put the Marvel stuff aside for now, but we'll get to it eventually. The Disney stuff, though, that is the one that still has me flabbergasted. I cannot believe that Disney has gone from the family-friendly household name to you don't want your kids touching Disney kind of thing. I don't get it. I really don't get it. They had the perfect brand. And in, like, what, five to ten years, they've managed to destroy Disney to the point where it really comes off as some kind of corporate sabotage? I mean, it was one thing when Mickey Mouse got into the public domain, which, growing up, nobody thought that would ever be possible. Um, but now we have Disney as just this... This thing that people don't want to touch or look at because it's just toxic. And I don't know why this happened. Like, Disney was a basically a perfect brand. You could always count on Disney to make something that would be family friendly, safe, and if not, you know, good, at least okay. Now you can count on Disney to make something that's not safe for families, weird and political, and probably not good as an actual product. And I never thought I would get to the point where, as an adult, I would look and say, I miss Disney being family friendly. Never thought that that would happen. I never thought I'd look back and go something like uh, Tinkerbell and the Pixie Hollow series was good. And even that wasn't that great. There, there was an older uh, Tinkerbell series from before that that was slightly better. But, like, the point is, I never thought I'd look at that crap and go, that was better than what's out now. Or go back and look at, say, Disney's direct-to-home VHS collection and go, those movies are better than anything they have put out in theaters in the past, like, ten years. Like, I'd rather go watch The Lion King 2 on VHS than ever watch the live-action remake of The Lion King or even a Marvel movie nowadays. It's so absurd and insane. Like, the direct to VHS used to be the kind of sweep it under the under the rug stuff because it wasn't very high quality. But now it's like, well, at least it's sane. At least it's meant for kids, usually. 
I think one of the Aladdin movies is a little bit different, but for the most part, they're they're actually pretty good and safe for your kids and whatnot. Now, this is not to confuse a lot of what the super anti-woke people say, which is that, you know, gay messages are all evil, yada, 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 blah, 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 go stick a banana up your nose. Um, I'm perfectly fine with stuff like Adventure Time and the great majority of Steven Universe for kids. There's no problem with having, like, two parents that are gay. So long as gay is not their entire character and they are not, you know, shoving the morals down the kid's throat because we don't need that. Like, you know why uh, Darnet is one of my favorite gems? Because she's a person first. She's cool, calm, collected, has future sight, and has a little bit of fear about the future because she doesn't believe where things can go based on evidence she has at the moment. Um, and that's really good writing. However, her identity is not, she's the gay one. It's just, she is a character who happens to be, uh, I guess, gay. <laughs> so growing up with Disney was weird because as a kid, um, even as like a young teenager, I really didn't like Disney movies because they all felt too safe. But, you know, that's that's the thing about teenagers. They all are a bit edgy and angsty and weird. That's perfectly fine. But I did not like Disney for being a little too safe and not willing to really tell more meaningful stories. And that doesn't mean hit at politics. It just means like... You can basically expect the main character to live at the end of every movie. It's it's not all dogs go to heaven. The dog's not going to die at the end. And I used to not like that because I felt like, as a kid, that those stories needed to be better. As an adult, I have changed my mind. I've actually gone to, gone to the point where I like the happy endings that older Disney movies have. A lot, actually. And I kind of miss them. Um, I still don't really get what the deal between Final Fantasy and Disney was because they never showed any of the Final Fantasy elements in those, uh, those games, the Kingdom Hearts games. They only showed the Disney elements for the most part, which kind of sucked, but I, I still thought it was cool that they could do that. I was actually watching clips from the old Disney movie, The Three Musketeers, which I don't know if that one ever hit theaters. That might have been a direct-to-home VHS tape. I don't know. But it was surprisingly good. Well-written, seems to have a moral to the story that's worth getting into, and it's actually pretty funny, with a couple of adult jokes slipped in there, which surprised me a bit. Um... Then you got stuff like the Goof Troop movie, uh, the Goof Troop TV show, which wasn't too bad, and so many other things that are just, like, bygone eras forgotten by Disney. But I, I never thought I'd get to the point where Disney would have changed from being a very safe company to something where I don't even want to touch. And I'm anti-woke for sure, but I'm not super anti-woke. So it's not even the gay characters that bother me. I don't mind, say, the Buzz Lightyear movie because the, there's a gay couple. I actually think that's cool they added those. I mind it mostly because they shafted the old Buzz Lightyear TV show and just erased all the cool elements of it. Um, where is my sexy planet head girl? Where is she? Is she just gone? I get that it's by different developers and it's technically a different universe, but, like, we have Buzz Lightyear canon. It exists. Why didn't they use it? And then to imply Zerg was an evil version of Buzz Lightyear from the future? Like, you might be able to get that story element to work somehow, but, uh, 
No, that's not what we want. We just want a good classic good versus evil fight. We don't want a moral like, oh, it's a bad guy, but is he really bad? Like, we've had the twist villains enough. Um, at least the twist villains of the past were all actually just evil. We don't want to have to have too many of the is the bad guy really the bad guy moments. That that works every now and again, but Zerg is cool because he's just a bad dude. I mean, he's so cool that I have an entire Necron army painted as Zerg, and then I have an army of Space Marines painted as Buzz Lightyear so they can fight. <laughs> that's seriously, like... Like, that's, that's how cool it was. But now we're in the place where... Where Disney does not understand its own properties. It does not understand itself. And it's it's gotten so bad that I'm even looking at the live action movie of Beauty and the Beast and going, you know, that was okay. I didn't like it when I first watched it. I, I was kind of down on it. I'm like, this doesn't need to exist. There's not a lot that's added to it that's very good. I did kind of like the gay character because it was funny, but outside of that, it's just it felt like they were kind of poking fun at the classic Disney movie with no understanding of it. However, they at least made the attempt to understand it, which the Little Mermaid remake did not even try. And I just never thought I'd be in the, the position where I'd be like, that was actually an okay remake. Um, I would be able to watch that a second time, but I can't even watch The Little Mermaid one once. Not to mention, what's up with all of the Irish girl hate? Seriously. It's like, if your character is an Irish redhead, then they're automatically going to try and cancel you. Like, did people literally become Eric Cartman? Did they really start believing that all the ginger people are... Uh, the spawn of the devil? Like, what the heck? I mean, just think about it. The, the, the freaking Irish people were brought to America as slaves, okay? They had a really shitty time here. Um, they eventually integrated into our culture, but, you know, it took a while. So, to remove all of their icons, like Jimmy Olsen, the Little Mermaid, um... April from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, to remove all of their icons is kind of just a slap to the face of their heritage. Like, their people used to be slaves. What the fuck? <laughs> what, what exactly is your actual moral stance here? Is it that we need to be nice to people that used to be slaves? Or is it that it's only okay in the moment with whatever group we decide? Here's the trick question. That's a trick question. The answer is the woke will just decide whatever is okay at the moment. Right now, we know what they want. Uh, they want gay, black, trans everywhere, which would have been fine if they would have done it like they did in the early 2000s, where everyone could still enjoy those characters, not slamming people in the head with a hammer. Um, but that's, that's kind of where we are, unfortunately. It's like, that's where they are right now. That's what they like. But with the woke, as they have shown time and time again, they'll change the rules. Right now, it's it's black, trans, whatever. Next year, it might be white, redhead people. You don't know. Maybe it'll be Native American people. You don't know. Maybe it'll space be a space lord motherfucker. Who knows? But the point is, like, they change the rules all the time, so it's impossible to actually have a moral stance and be part of their group. Because there is no actual moral stance to it. It's all whatever is popular at the moment. But like, you know, politics aside from that side of the, the agenda, it's just... It just sucks because we do see people like me or the, the gay community just get kicked out of whatever the woke used to be because they changed the rules on us 
and what they decided was important back then is now considered toxic. But what's considered important now is also considered toxic by the people that used to be there in the beginning. Um, and that just kind of sucks because we had a really, a really good sweet spot for maybe about five years where things could be open but not be insulting. And that's, that's one of the things it's like, when you look at, say, Gravity Falls, which is a good example, they have a, they have two gay characters in there, the policeman, I think, um, and it's just a, a cute little relationship, it's funny, it's not insulting, it can introduce kids to the idea that gay people exist without hammering them in the head and making the parents feel upset. I know that Disney also really, really tried to, like, wipe the gay out of that show. Like, they they got mad at the creators because they were like, uh, I'm sorry, you have two characters that seem to be really, really gay? You can, uh, why don't you give one of them a girlfriend so that we know better? And it's like, dude, Disney, you guys used to hate gays. You can't turn your, you can't turn the cheek and have us forgive you. All right? I remember what you did. We have emails proving what you did. You cannot turn the other cheek and now say that you would support it, because screw you. It's the same reason I hate Nickelodeon, because they literally canceled Legend of Korra and banned the last episode because they slightly hinted that Korra might have a relationship with the girl. Slightly hinted. And... They banned the last episode, and then all of a sudden they're like, Ah, we have gay icons, see? We have Legend of Korra. Look at how progressive we are now. No, you guys aren't progressive, you're assholes. There's a difference. Well, maybe not anymore. <laughs> uh, that sucks. But yeah, just... I, I just wanted to point out, like, a lot of the things with Disney are really weird nowadays. I miss the old days where I could actually hate Disney for being too safe and be like, yo, why can't you be like the weird shit that I like? I never realized when I was younger that asking Disney to be like the weird shit that I like was actually the worst thing I could have done. Because I got the monkey's paw. Oh yes, as a kid, I would have loved it if, say, they had lesbian princesses. Let them be sexy, let them be lesbian, let them be awesome. But now that I'm an adult, I'm like, oh, Disney would fuck it up. Because the progressive woke don't know how to actually handle these ideas at all. It's like, I don't get it. I don't get why they can espouse uh, the virtues of like uh, making gay characters, making trans characters, and then every time they try, they they screw it up because it's no longer about just making a character, telling a message, and sharing an experience with people that might not understand it otherwise. It's all about, I'm right, you're wrong, which is a bad attitude to have. When you have that kind of attitude, you don't include people that would otherwise be against you, you push them away. The reason that I'm I'm so mad at like the author John Della Rose is not because I am mad at him because he's homophobic. It's because he has a chance to take what has become a broken, fractured gay community and all the people that have been ousted from it and and just wait, like, I, I am technically in the trans community myself and I've already been kicked out. <laughs> I was kicked out a long time ago because I will not play to their politics, but he had a chance to, like, take the people that were from the fractured community and be like, hey... This may not be what you were looking for originally, but these are just normal stories with no politic agenda. Agenda, You're welcome here. You can join me and read my books and 
have a place to feel safe in without, you know, feeling crazy. And instead, you know, the author had to go on a homophobic spree, and I'm like, you know, you keep saying stuff like, why do you... Uh, he, he keeps saying stuff like, why would you take half of your audience and tell them that you hate them? And then he does it himself, and I'm like, you are a fucking hypocrite. And I'm... I get that most people are hypocrites, but I don't want to follow people that are blatantly hypocrites. That will tell you one thing and then actually do another. I I want to find people that are in the, in the middle, people that are balanced. Not Disney and not super Christian whatever. Just, I want to go back to Adventure Time. Can we go back to Adventure Time, please? No? Damn it. <laughs> Uh, oh well. It's, it's just a nightmare, and I think that's about all the real thoughts I had on Disney's situation right now. The stuff they did to Doctor Who is even worse for all the other reasons. Before I, I forget it, though, I, I will add in at least the point that with Doctor Who, like... The remade Doctor from the new series was at least bisexual with a heavy leaning towards liking women more. And although that may have been played off more for laughs in the beginning, it was still there. But like, you know, when we got to the, the female Doctor, I gave her a chance and I thought she was a decent enough actor for it, but the script writing was just trash. And, uh, oh boy, the problem was just so blatant. Like, they, they just hammered you in the head with all their ideas. And when they had an entire season without any Cybermen and without any Daleks at all, none of the classic Doctor Who stuff in that season at all, that's when I left. I'm like, no. We know what Doctor Who is. It's supposed to always have Cybermen and Daleks, or at least one or the other, and sometimes both in the same episode, which is always so cool to see because they're both really big threats, but the Daleks are obviously the much worse ones. But I'm getting off point. Uh, Doctor Who's become garbage and destroyed itself, um, and it's, it's just a damn shame. But you can still go back and watch the older episodes and enjoy those. That's still possible. Just like you can go back and read the old books of Warhammer or watch the old movies of Disney. The old stuff still exists. And it, you can still go back to it and watch it and read it and view it and whatever. But the new stuff you might have trouble with. Alright, I, I think that's about all I really had to say and do at the moment, but... Uh, thanks for watching, and hope you guys, wherever you are, have a wonderful rest of your day, and adios.